Hey everybody, it is Colette Baron reed and we're here again for the weekly Oracle Card Forecast for this week, September the 29th. And before I talk, I just want to say uh, it's just so humbling and I'm so honored and just beside myself at how much support I got for my book. And um, Uncharted is like really doing so well and it's because of you. It's because of you and because you all really like it and you've been telling your friends about it. and. Honestly, I'm just so, so grateful. I'm so grateful. It took me a year to write that book and, and Fred and <laughs> I'm just, what can I tell you? I'm just so happy and grateful and grateful to Hay House. And I do want to make one shout out because um, a lot of my work um, is influenced by a lot of different people. So especially in Vision, in Vision was influenced by Carl Jung, Active Imagination, Eco Psychology, all kinds of, the list goes on. But particularly lately, I am a student of Dr. Joe Dispenza's and, um, and I think I'd like to just give him a big shout out right now because um, his work as a scientist, neuroscientist, and um, has given me a different language when I talk about co-creation and given me that kind of sense of credibility in my own head about the conversations I'm having that now has measurable proof. So I really want to thank Joe um, for his work and for his influence on my work. So mwah, thank you, Joe. Okay, let's get on to you guys. What a week I had. Goblins is our first card. Now, we're still using the enchanted map because we're looking at the map of the soul. So what do goblins mean? Well, I want to talk about goblins in connection to the other three cards first, okay? So we've got goblins followed by wishing well, which tells us about goblins, wide open and strength. So we begin the week knowing that we have been stirred up by our choices, our desires, the shift in our thinking, and we might be getting slammed by, by, by our own internal resistance to change. Now, if this is you, don't worry, you're not stuck. One of my favorite authors, Catherine Ponder, who is a Unity Church minister who wrote a book called The Dynamic Laws of Prayer and The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity, and I can't remember which book she talked about this in, but it was probably the best description of what happens in a manifestation period. So when you are co-creating your new reality, knowing that you are in partnership with Spirit, or part, and Spirit is in partnership with you first and foremost, that's never been a been an issue. It's us being in partnership with them, him, it, sure, whatever. So uh, chemicalization is where either things stall, they fall apart, uh, people leave your life, um, you're trying to make a change, and your own insides are saying, "No, I want that coffee," or, or like, "No, I'm I'm still gonna drink," or or like, "I'm not giving that guy up," or "No, no, no, I want to be codependent." Like, even though you wouldn't say that to yourself, like, "No, no, 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 no." What if I leave them and their their life will fall apart? That kind of thing. Anything you can think of. Oh no, I want to be poor. Although nobody wants to be poor, but it's the I'm talking about poverty of thought, not necessarily of of uh, physical things, right? So it's that mental, uh, you know, mental poverty that there's not enough. That's what I mean by poor. That's what she means by that in her books. So we have to have complete and absolute faith during the chaos that ensues when you want to make a change. So love your little goblins. Don't worry about it. If little chicken little wakes up and says, the sky is falling, or you know, some one of you thinks like, oh my God, I just lost my job. How am I going to have another one? And you have to trust that spirit has set that up. So because you asked for it and you're something better is now coming. Remember what is yours cannot be withheld from you. What, and I'm going to talk about that in a video because that's such a key thing. I don't think a lot of people understand what that means, but just a hint, what is ours means what we claim first through our thinking, second through our emotions and third, our commitment to spirit and our faith in that spirit will deliver such a thing to us in reflection in the highest good in the form that is appropriate to us, not the one we dictate. With wishing well, let's just move on and I'll tell you what that is. So remember I said last week, we got some similar cards, which I think is kind of interesting how they flow. So we did talk about wishing well being about, you put the coin in the, in the water, but you gotta walk away. And if you keep staring at it, 
like nothing's coming out of the wishing well, okay? Like the thing isn't in there. It's like putting your thought and your belief and your feelings out into the field or the void or the mind of God or source or spirit or whatever you want to call it. I like to call it spirit. You got to walk away. You have to surrender it. So if goblins are there besides the wishing well, is it possible that we could become too attached to the outcome of what we desire and refusing to just be in the now? And we don't want to be forced to be in the now because that will happen. We'll get, you know, it'll be like we're going to get kicked behind the knees and like, ah, hit bottom. But we don't have to hit bottom to do this. We can do this in advance. Okay, and again, wide open. Wide open is the prescription for these two experiences. What do we do with wide open? We stay wide open to however spirit is going to deliver us whatever it is that we need and desire. And then we take right action. The strength card, the last card talks about taking right action. We have the strength. We have the power. Remember I talked about my coffee addiction. So, you know, I've had all kinds of addictions. I've had addictions to people where I thought, oh my God, I can't, I need to be with that person, even though the relationship is so chaotic. And, and then I wonder like, why do I feel so crappy? Right? And, and so we have the strength to push past that and to actually realize that, okay, I have to leave this for uncharted waters now. I don't know what's going to replace this. This is how it felt like for me when I got clean and sober 30 years ago. I had no clue how my life was going to be. All I knew was that I could never go back to the way it was. And I was scared and I was feisty and I was, you know, very rebellious and I didn't want to listen to what anybody had to say, but boy, oh boy, my desire for a new life was greater than the need to have the old life. So that's what all of us are being required to do right now. It's work, it is work. It's so easy to get trapped in the familiar. Little goblins run the show and they're driving your bus forward going, hey. No, and you know what? No blame, no blame, no shame. This is all part of the human condition. We are going to fall prey to spiritual narcolepsy. We'll fall asleep at the wheel. Our goblin will take over and we'll wonder why the heck we ended up over there when we really wanted to go over there. So what? Course correction, we are allowed. We get mazillion chances. We make amends, we start again, we realize, we learn about ourselves and we keep going. Ah, love you. Have a great week. And if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. And don't forget, you can leave a comment and when I have time, I, I at least like them. I do, it's me, it's nobody else but me. <laughs> Take care, bye. I've seen the future. It's beautiful. I've seen the future.